Station, this is Houston. Are you ready for the event? Station is ready. Georgia Institute of Technology, this is Mission Control Houston. Please call station for a voice check. Station, this is Jason Vader from the Georgia Institute of Technology. How do you hear me? Hey, Jason, read you loud and clear. Nice to talk to you again. You as well, Shane. I, uh, I'm digging this shirt. Oh, and I love the flag behind it. You got cool, me, Shane? Cool, just for you. <laughs> well, uh, so happy anniversary. We are exactly two months from when you actually launched into space. How's the mission going? How is everything up there? Mission's going really well. Um, we're Expedition 50 now. As you may remember, I was Expedition 49 when I launched, but that only lasted about a week because my other crewmates departed here a week after we showed up. Um, but my Expedition 50 crewmates, uh, Peggy Whitson and Tomas Pesquet and Oleg Nowitzki, showed up um, about six weeks after we got here. Uh, I, get, no, I guess about a month after we got here. And ever since then, we've been Expedition 50, and we'll be 50 until the time I leave. Um, in the spring. Has it, I mean, it's been two months, you're about halfway through it. Has it gone by fast? Do you, can you believe that it's already halfway done? Yeah, I'm trying not to keep track of time, but it, it does seem like it's flown by pretty quickly. Um, it's already almost Christmas, which is hard to believe, and uh, 2017 will be here in just a few weeks, so that, that's kind of crazy to think about. We have a lot of stuff coming up that's going to, I think, really uh, make the time go quickly. We have two spacewalks in early January that we're planning right now, so uh, gearing up for that already, so uh, that'll make the time go quickly as well. What's... um. I've seen you grow lettuce, you're grabbing spacecrafts with robotic arms. There's something that you've done or a few things that you've done that have really piqued your interest and really excited you. Well, uh, last week was the first time I'd ever captured a, another vehicle with a robotic arm. That was pretty special um, when the Japanese HTV-6 showed up. Um, really just huge, beautiful vehicle and uh, was able to capture that with the Canadian robotic arm. That was a real thrill, and being a part of that team, it's not just me, it was a whole team doing it on the ground, as well as my crewmates here on board, so that was pretty cool. Um, another thing that's really piquing, I think all of our interest, is just looking out the window and taking pictures of our beautiful planet and different places around the world that we may not have seen before or that are really strikingly beautiful, um, even though we hadn't, we hadn't uh, thought about it before. What, what is that like? When you're looking out, is it... Is it hard to figure out where you are, or is there, do you just remember back to social studies class and go, well, that looks like Italy, so that must be Rome, for example? Yeah, I'm pretty good on the bigger things, the countries, but the cities I'm not so good at, and uh, some of my crewmates are really good at that. We help each other out. We also have a great application on our computers that shows, shows us exactly where we are and we can zoom in as much as we want to see cities and towns and everything. So we have a lot of help, um, but by doing that, we're learning. We're always learning in different parts of the world that we, we were not familiar with before. So it's pretty fun. That's cool. Is, would you say that you're, you're fully acclimated to, to living in space, or are there some things that you might not get used to before it's time to go back? I would say I'm fully acclimated. I don't think it took any of this crew very long to acclimate. I mean, we're talking just a few days, maybe a week at the most, for everybody to, to be completely acclimated. So uh, we were very fortunate. Um, everybody's just a little bit different. You never know how it's going to go. But in our case, uh, everybody adapted very quickly. Let's talk a little bit about that, actually. And I see people floating back and forth. What's it like being up there with a crew of six and so many different nationalities and, and language? What are those interactions like, and how often do you get to just sit and chat? I know you're extremely busy up there. Yeah, that's a great question. And uh, our crew, uh, we, we're kind of split in, I would say, two or well, in several different groups, actually, depending on which Soyuz you came up on. So my crew. My Soyuz crew is two cosmonauts and myself, and the other crew is a cosmonaut, an American astronaut, and a French astronaut. So very diverse 
Um, and then we're kind of also broken up into here on board into the cosmonauts and the astronauts. So um, typically the astronauts will eat all our meals together. The Russian cosmonauts will eat all their meals together. We do come together usually on Friday nights and Saturday nights to talk about the week and um, kind of just relax and enjoy meals together on the weekends. So that's how our crew interacts. Of course, we see each other every day and uh, we make sure everything's going well um, on each side of the space station. But uh, during the during the workday, we're pretty much divided and it was, we stay on our side doing all of our tasks and the cosmonauts will stay on their side doing their tasks. Let's, let's talk about the, the spacewalks that, that you referenced earlier. Uh, I think you have two. It's coming up in January. A little bit about w what you're doing and by going outside. What, what is your task? Yeah, so our task is going to be to replace batteries um, that are on the outside of the space station that obviously provide power to this entire complex. Um, there are 12 uh, batteries on the starboard or the right side of the space station that we're going to go after. Uh, we're going to do, um, um, on one, the first spacewalk will take care of six of them, the second spacewalk will take care of the other six. Um, and it's not a one-for-one -one replacement. These new batteries that came up on the Japanese HTV-6 are much more efficient. So one battery and then one adapter plate, which is a new piece of equipment, will take the place of two of the, of the old batteries or the current batteries. So um, it's a combination of robotic operations and spacewalk operations that are going to make this happen. So it's pretty complex, um, and it's going to be starting here pretty soon with the robotics operations. And then we go out the door for the first time on January 6th and then January 13th for the second spacewalk. I'm curious about that. I mean, every experiment you do is important, but is like this, this, the spacewalk thing kind of like this thing you constantly look forward to, or is it like, oh, it's time to go outside, it just happens to be in a different, you know, part of the space station, outside the space station? Well, spacewalks are pretty rare, and uh, we're very fortunate to have a planned spacewalk. Um, it doesn't happen on every mission, and really maybe only once a year currently we're, are we doing planned spacewalks. So our crew's very fortunate that that's going to happen while we're here. Um, the planned spacewalk also means that we've had a chance to train on these tasks in the neutral buoyancy lab in Houston um, before. So we're, we're familiar with the equipment and the hardware and the location of where we're going. Um, so it obviously makes it a little bit easier. But it is one of those, I think, pinnacle things in your mission when you look back on it. Um, things that I've gotten to do already grabbing the, the vehicle the other day and spacewalking will certainly be the operational highlights. Now, we're all doing incredible experiments, like you mentioned as well, and those are really the focus of the space station right now. Um, but operationally, you know, going outside is very special. Um, and again, it doesn't happen all the time, and we're just very fortunate. How about Christmas? What's the plan? I saw your Thanksgiving meal. Uh, now the holiday is coming up. How do you celebrate Christmas, or do you even know the meal yet? So we're going to have, um, you know, traditional, I think, probably very similar to the Thanksgiving meal you may have seen. And we'll also have some, uh, since we have our French astronaut on board, he's going to provide a great uh, European meal for us. Um, and the Russians, the Russian Christmas is on January 7th, so we'll enjoy um, Russian cuisine on that day with them. So it's going to be a great international Christmas season. Uh, we're going to get to celebrate it on December 25th and January 7th. So it'll be a, a definitely a unique opportunity for all of us. Cool. I only got about a minute, um, so we'll rush through these ones. Where are you exactly in the space station? What's that room used for? So right now I'm in the U.S. laboratory. So this is where we do a lot of our work. A lot of our experiments are set up in here. It's kind of our command post as well. Behind me, back by the uh, the Ramblin' Wreck flag, is kind of the command post of the U.S. side of the space station. Um, and then this kind of is a center point for all the other modules that kind of either go behind me or in front of me. All right. And then my final one is, are you worried that perhaps your football teams play better when you're not on Earth considering we beat Georgia and Army finally beat Navy for the first time in 15 years. Yeah, I was really happy to see that. I told Coach Johnson a few years ago when I was talking at a thing that I was 1-0 uh, um, when I was in space for Tech beating Georgia, so now I'm 2-0. and So I told him he has to tell NASA to send me to space more often. <laughs> Thank you so much, Shane. We're at the end of our time. A safe mission, a safe continued mission, a safe trip home. 
and a Merry Christmas to you, the crew, and also your family back in Houston. Thanks again. Thanks, Jason. Merry Christmas to everybody. Go Jackets. Stacen, this is Houston ACR. That concludes the event. Thank you to all participants and guests from the Georgia Institute of Technology. Station, please stand by while we reconfigure video and audio communications.